Hi, angels around. This is Teacher Kimi of Kimi Pija. Welcome to another learning session on Practical Research 1, Qualitative Research. This time, we will be talking about writing the results or Chapter 4. In this particular video, we will be ta tackling thematic approach, coding process, and basic parts of Chapter 4. Now, thematic approach is the, com is the common approach we use to interpret and analyze qualitative data. Coding process is a process under thematic approach that helps you navigate through your data before, during, and after the data gathering procedure. Lastly, I shall give you a basic format of Chapter 4, although you should be notified that your teachers may have something else in mind. The format that I shall give you is a very simple one. On the other hand, this can also actually help you in creating your Chapter 4, the insights that you will gain in the basic parts of chapter 4 that I have in here can help you navigate through your writing process. So just stay still and listen to this. So before anything else, by this time, you should already have defended your or proposed your research titles. You should have already edited your chapters 1 to 3 and validated your data gathering tools like interview protocols and observation protocols. However, you can also uh, already give the panelist or your advisor a sample of your focus group discussion focus group discussion protocol or an FGD protocol. This one is usually created based on the interview protocol or observation protocols that you have conducted or based on the results of the interviews and observations that you are, you are conducting. FGD protocol making is an ongoing process. Last but not the least, you should already have clear data gathering procedure and established conceptual framework. In my part, I haven't encouraged or asked my learners to create conceptual framework, uh, to create theoretical framework. Rather, I encourage them to create a very good and creative conceptual framework so that it may be able to guide them well from the very beginning of their research until the product of the research that they are going to do. Key reminders for everyone. A statement of the problem is the heart of your research. I would always ask my learners about this and they will always answer the statement of the problem as the heart of the research. Number two, qualitative research deals with visual and verbal evidences rather than numerical statistical ones. We know that. Number three, the way you write your results may not be the same as others do it. And that is actually very cool. That is very creative. But this format that I am going to teach you here is the simplest one that you can do to, uh, to, to write your results or your chapter four. This one is very much in line with your statement of the problem. As we say, the statement of the, the problem will be your basis on how you create your chapter one, two, three, until chapter four, and even until chapter five. Number four, chapter four of your manuscript may be time consuming and difficult depending on how well laden your methodology is. That's why you should have already established your conceptual framework as well as your methodology. Number five, in processing the data, you have to remember COA or COA. You collect, collecting data, you organize, organizing data, and you analyze, analyzing data. Now, these three always goes together. In conducting a research, there is always COA happening in every type of research, even in quantitative researches. Let's start with thematic approach. Thematic approach is the main concept in this particular video. Thematic approach is a process by which researchers analyze repeating patterns in all available qualitative data either verbal or visual data in line with the research questions or STPs at hand. Now, this can happen, thematic approach happens before, during, and after data gathering procedure. Thematic approach represents how well the researchers know 
the, the current subject matter that they are talking about, the research topic that they are dealing with. The repeating patterns or themes are generated from the answers of the key informants and the observed conditions through visuals such as videos or photos, among others. Answers of the key informants, direct quotes, are usually the verbal evidences. These themes are chunked into basic themes, organizing themes, and global themes, of which you are going to gain further insight through the smart graph that I have on the next slide. These themes are then turned into codes for easier analysis and relative tallying. These themes should be arranged, then later written in full paragraphs with the evidences primarily based on your statements of the problem. This is the smart graph that I am talking about. In this slide, you see how basic themes specify for the organizing themes and ultimately for the global themes. Basic themes resulted from the data gathering procedure. They are usually having this high specificity as they are the raw data in the collecting part of data processing. The organizing themes can be themes based on specific questions during the interviews and observations. This is where the basic themes are grouped together. Thus, organizing or the arranging of data and last but not the least of course is the anal analyzing part wherein the relatively wider range pattern that may involve several basic themes and organizing themes is put is uh, termed as the global themes because it becomes the result of your study with presets and reorganized based on the stp again it is always based on the stp this is an example for you to gain more uh, practice, to gain more skills in conducting your thematic approach. To give you further insight into what a theme is, this exercise, this is actually an exercise that you can do. So grab your paper and pen. I will wait for you. You can pause this video and discover that you can actually do it just by analyzing the verbal and the visual data or the VV that you have gathered. So come on, uh, pause this for a while. If you have the paper and pen already, let's proceed. So this is the example for the drill. Analyze the following data and come up with themes for the STP. What are the implications of the pollutions in the mangrove forest to the economic and sociological conditions of the community? What are the evidences that we have? Wait, this one is an STP. So it has to have certain evidences in here, evidences that can answer the question. For example, Manay B said, Kan mga tao kaya ide basta-basta man sana magsabad ning basura ninra maski sa in. So if we uh, translate that into English, it goes like this. People here just throw their garbage anywhere. You have to be noted that there are other views or opinions with almost the same content as this one. Let's go with another evidence. We have three three uh, visual evidences although i'm so sorry i was not able to generate them we are uh, currently on a lockdown right now i'm just taking my time off to um to generate to synthesize something that i can be thankful for myself someday and that uh, that of service to the youth that of service to the community that of service to the teacher who may be uh, teaching also practical research one kawai kawai naman po dyan. so we have in here the picture of the garbages picture of a child throwing the garbage near the mangrove forest picture of an adult throwing garbage near the mangrove forest so what what would be your um, insight regarding this using these evidences what are your inferences Thematic approach is actually just inferencing about what the data is telling you. You do not, you do not have to directly get those uh, things because technically, uh, even people will directly answer you 
about uh, things that you may not ask them. And you will find them in their words. They are implied. Sometimes they are even explicit in their words. They will really say it. And uh, at times, you will just have to read between the line with, of course, proper uh, analysis that is being taught to you by your teachers. Let's see. So for this particular sample, we have this for, I have generated, I myself was able to generate this for uh, themes, for, uh, for the presented visual and verbal data. So people do not have discipline. Correction, do not have discipline. Uh, people are not aware of the consequences of their actions, both to the environment or for the environment and based on the current laws. The barangay officials, we can say this, may not have the budget to reinforce laws related to throwing garbages anywhere. So law reinforcement, we can say, is not that present in the barangay or in the community. So those four. Now uh, we have four. This is thematic approach. We are You are done. That's very good. If you are able to answer any of these four, at least one, two, three, all of these four, or at least, or actually, if you were able to generate or synthesize more than these four, that is very nice. That is very good. But make sure that your um, your themes are grounded. They have to be well grounded. Okay? So another theme, I'm sorry, I, I forgot the theme. Uh, another theme is that the direct quote itself, they are saying, People throw garbage just about anywhere. That is a theme. That is actually a basic theme. Later on, we will be putting that into context by creating your organizing and your global themes. Let's go with the coding process. Coding process and categorizing. It goes uh, along with categorizing. This is a process under thematic approach where a word, a clause, or a phrase, bahala ka po, is generated or synthesized and organized by the researchers to appropriately describe in summary a phenomenon representing a common theme. The phenomenon should be based on the saturation of the discourses during interviews or as supported by the visuals. This is a process of data organizing, so analysis would be easier. So may uh, let's go back with the saturation thing. So make sure that uh, there is not just one verbal evidences, but at least a couple, and of course a couple of visual evidences to support your uh, your themes before you actually uh, start coding them. Now there are two types of codes. These are the preset codes and the emergent codes. The preset codes is the list of codes created in advance. Preset codes is like the assumed answers by the researchers. They can always be correct or right or incorrect depending on how much you as researchers know about your research topic. So after having identified the basic themes or existing patterns as seen from the raw gathered verbal and visual data, you will now have to code them. But before actually doing the data gathering procedure, there is a sense of imagining already. There is sense of visualizing already what has to come. And that happens during the part where you with your teammates with your research team tries to come up with preset uh, codes to make your data gathering process more easier okay more easy i'm sorry we also have the emergent codes the emergent codes are the codes that come up during reading and rereading of gathered data not found among the preset codes that you have organized previously in your first in your part before the start of your data gathering procedure. After the drills, here's another written work 
a written work that should be done by pair using your draft notebooks if you have your draft notebooks that can potentially help you gain skills in writing your chapter 4. Now the research title is my own brainchild so if you are interested about this comment down below and look me up from various uh, social media platforms. The written work is called a thematic process so it has to be done by pair using their draft notebooks by the way why do you have to make use of draft notebooks as a teacher in senior high school i encourage i required my learners to bring their draft notebooks so that they will see that uh, how they grow from one point to another point they will uh they will first look at you they do not know anything they that they feel that they cannot do it then suddenly they are already doing it because they, you gave them the format and when they are doing it they learn the mistakes that they have done you check their papers and you make them repeat it but the draft uh, notebooks actually uh, saves all the all the things that they have done wrong in the past so that they may know how to not do it again so we come up, come up with possible themes and their preset codes for the following STPs of the case study in, entitled Pollutions in the Mangrove Forest of Rawis, Libon Albay, a case for sustainability. In the table below, you can see four columns. The first column is the statement of the problem. The second column is the basic themes. Below is the codes and the organizing themes and the codes and the global themes as well as its codes. Statement of the problem number one for this particular uh, particular research, what are the different types of pollutions present in the mangrove forest of Rawis Libon Albay? Number two, what are the implications of the pollutions in the mangrove forest to the community in terms of economic implications, uh, sociological implications, and other implications? Number three, what are the views and opinions of the community folks regarding the presence of pollutions in the mangrove forest? So if you already have your research title presented or proposed now you have your own uh, research topic you have your own research title you have the chapter one already go for the same title try to create this uh, type of um, written work use in your notebook using your draft notebook just drop them all it will take you 30 to one hour to whatever hours of minutes but at least it will already help you gain confidence in writing your chapter 4 because knowing the basic themes organizing themes and global themes in a preset mode pa lang, at the very onset before your data gathering procedure gives you much confidence on what are the specific uh, things to look for what are the themes that you have to take care of what are the patterns that you have to see through the data gathering process that you are conducting next is another of course written work as i have told you writing is a skill the best way to learn to write is to practice it Again, this one is a simple format. This is already my best offering to you on how to create the format, how to write the chapter 4. This is already the format that I am giving you. This one is very simple. But uh, even if this one may not be the same as something that you are looking for, stay still because you might learn something more um, valuable in this uh, in this learning session than with anyone else than with using your books than with uh learning through the various uh prepared published or thesis done already okay let's go and get some insights rolling so outlining chapter four create a preliminary outline of your chapter four results use the simple format below at the very center you write the title pollution in the mangrove forest of rawis libon albay a case for sustainability then at the first paragraph or two you write the thesis statement the thesis statement is based on the chapter one the almost the whole of chapter one is rolled into one or two paragraphs particularly stp or stp is a major component 
of your thesis statement. I will have to prepare another video for how to create this statement. And we also have the background of the study, some delimitations, and the basic information regarding the study. Now, your chapter 2 will be represented in a paragraph or two using some relevant RRLs that will show the richness of the cited data you have for your study. The next one is the methodology. In a paragraph, it can summarize your data gathering procedure, data analysis, interpretation, among other components of the research design that you have chosen. First and foremost, the methodology paragraph should start with presenting what really is the design that you have chosen, either a case study, ethnographic, phenomenology, uh, discourse, whatever type of study that you have chosen. So before that, before directly going into the results, you may uh, also put a paragraph that that will like introduce or for a presentation, just presenting the following are the the data gathered through blah 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 so you have already in here th that following the number one stp for this type of research pollution in mangrove forest is what are the various pollutions that are present in the mangrove forest of rawi steven albay so that uh, question will be turned into a subtopic that is a subtopic of the title that you you can see in here so types of pollutions in the mangrove forest of rawi steven albay depending and how you have interpreted the data or how you are interpreting the data as of now because you, you are not yet or you may at this point you may or may not have yet uh, been conducting your data gathering procedure so put an A, B, C, D and in there. Now, this uh, research that I have in here is just an example. Again, may I encourage you to actually make use of the current research title that you already have, that you have presented and proposed and defended to the panelists. Number two, implications of mangrove forest pollution. So it is economic implications, sociological implications, and other implications. Wait. So the implications are actually divided into three, the economic, sociological implications, and other implications. Is If there may be something that do not jive with economic and sociological implications, although I doubt that. So you may remove this afterwards, the uh, other implications. I'm just trying to... Uh, provide some sort of allowance for for you to think about okay but these two are based on the theoretical support of the study using the three gear model of sustainable development of which the three gear model of sustainable development is made up of the environmental factors the economic factors and the sociological factors that makes up the sustainable development of one society or one community that's why we are looking for for the economic and implications as well as sociological implications because we already have in here a factor called the mangrove forest pollution, an environmental factor. Now let's go with number three. In number three, how would you be categorizing your key informants has to be clear. You may start imagining conducting focus group discussion for each of these focus groups. So you may have focus groups such as folk leaders. Wala dyan nakalagay but you may also put common folks or the, the people that usually are not the folk leaders. So you also have in here the views and opinions of elderly. They, they have already experienced a lot of things. They have a sound uh, interpretation of what the current community is doing right now. So you may ask them. And of course, the views and opinions of the youth. The youth which, which are gaining much learning as junior high school learners or as senior high school learners or as college students. Lastly, for you to really learn how to write it, we have another uh, part of the written work that I give my students. The, uh, it has to be conducted individually using their draft notebooks to see uh, where they are incorrect or where they are correct or what can they do better the next time. Create a paragraph or two to describe a section in your chapter 3 entitled Data Analysis and Interpretation, explaining how you will conduct coding process and thematic approach to analyze and interpret the qualitative data using the
the sample below as your guide. So this sample below is just a general avenue, general presentation of how to use your thematic approach and coding approach. So it is uh, will it will be better if you turn this into something more specific using the research title that you have. Usually, data analysis and interpretation among quantitative research is actually the uh, statistical treatment that you have. So in your in your practical research too, you will have statistical treatment and the statistical treatment process and interpretation of data has to collide with one another. Data analysis and interpretation comes after data gathering procedure in your methodology goes like this for the general thing. This study shall utilize thematic approach in the analysis and interpretation of data. This approach shall include coding process to be facilitated by the researchers before, during, and after data gathering procedure. Preset codes shall be the product of the coding process before and even during the actual data gathering procedure, while emergent codes shall be considered after uh, rereading the after uh, the analysis, the preliminary analysis and interpretation. You also have the data shall be treated and interpreted using verbal process and based on the chronology of the stated problems. Gathered data shall be analyzed vis-a-vis -vis reviewed literatures and theoretical frameworks if available. Now, in our part, in, in the part of my learners, I have not really talked about theoretical frameworks with them. Why? Because I believe that theoretical framework can be applied to those people who are really engaging much, much longer time in a certain discipline or field. Because these theoretical frameworks are true with specific disciplines or fields. Themes shall be synthesized to organize and analyze the, to organize the analyzed data. Okay, thank you so much. I think that's it. Let me just cite my major reference is actually the Practical Research 1 Teacher's Guide from the Department of Education. But this uh, book does not have all the specific type of uh, written work, the drills, the practice that you can gain to really develop writing skills. That is what I provided to you right now. But most of the contents are written in here, summarized also for easy understanding of anyone listening to this type of uh, learning session. Again, in service of the youth, in service of the whole community, this is me trying to create something that will make me think myself someday and trying to be of service to my community while on quarantine or lockdown. This is still Teacher Kimi of Kimipedia, Angels Around.